Hi, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. It's a short introduction to these bigger ideas of understanding how we can use planning tools to then integrate tech tools into our classroom structures. So the big question is, you know, what works and why? And so looking at these ideas of digital resources versus traditional resources and all these comparisons that come up and cost and variety of information, student preferences. But the biggest question I think is really, you know, uh, what tools are better for what situations and understanding why. Um, can we enhance, for example, the efficiency of learning or our possibilities to differentiate and to be more inclusive in our classrooms? Um, how does that work based on technology tools? So I'd like to remind us all, I know that you guys have been exposed to this before, but just to sort of use this as a point of reference when we plan, if we're really clear on what it is we want at the end of the day, what is it that we're trying to get out of this particular class lesson, right? If we can identify those objectives first, then know how we'd measure if we're going to achieve them. Okay, well, if this happens, then I'll think that I achieved the objective. That's great. Then, and only then, is really the moment when you can say, okay, I know the exact right activity to use. And sometimes those are digital tools, and sometimes those are not digital tools. But coming up with that decision about what to do in the class and what resources to use is very much based on having a very clear objective. So I just wanted to lay that out there. We'll talk about this more in practice and how we do this on a daily basis within our classroom lessons so that we can decide when is the best time and use of technology tools in our classroom. So once we have the objective set and we know how we're going to evaluate that, then we get to the step of, you know, what activities are best. And so if we look at the general types of activities that could influence student learning uh, outcomes in the most positive way, we have some research that was done by John Hattie that I recategorized into, you know, things that uh, really deal with enhancing student self-efficacy. I can do this. I am a learner. Uh, reinforcement learning, knowing the students and, and attending to their authentic needs, teacher as perceived by the student, uh, enhancing metacognitive skills. All of these things are very, very important. And at least 50 of these can be substantiated looking through a neuroscientific lens of what works within classroom settings. So we'll make reference to this, but there's other videos that really explain each of these 50 um, classroom interventions that can be used. What we really want to look at with you is the tech tools that support student learning outcomes and the new way that they have been integrated into classrooms. And we'll do that through uh, concrete examples, things that have to do with the flipped classroom and what is the neuroscience that supports that. The e portfolio structure, why measuring student learning outcomes over the course of the entire life of a student would be a better way to assess that student. Looking at specific tools that exist out there, for example, the resources that now exist to create uh, automatic subtitles, like for example, in the video that you're watching right now, you can click that little CC button on the bottom and you can see um, subtitles in just about any language you like, um, even in English, <laughs> and that will actually enhance the way that your brain is recording that information. So we'll look at other types of tools like that that enhance student learning outcomes because they reinforce the same message through, through different types of neural pathways. We'll also look at this big area of uh, gaming or gamification or cognitive gaming and what really exists out there. Does cognitive training really work? And what are some of the very interesting algorithms that are applied to gaming that enhance the amount of repetition that students will spend practicing certain types of activities that could be leveraged to improve student learning outcomes. We'll also look at the general integration of things that you could ask kids to do at home, for example, using um, self-paced learning by integrating certain videos, say, you know, watch this video, uh, try this experiment at, at home, and then come and let's sort of pull the science behind that apart afterwards. And then we'll also look at a special uh, category of tools that have to do with soft skills. For example, there is such a thing as, you know, growth mindset frameworks and feedback tools that are now available uh, online to sort of help kids track their own thinking about their own thinking, how they approach different problems, when they get upset or frustrated, and how do they actually manage those things. So the Mindset Works, for example, is an online tool that helps enhance growth mindsets within or external to school context. So what we're going to do together is kind of like a bit larger. We're going to be expanding and looking at this idea of not just tech tools and, you know, here's the latest and the greatest that exists out there, but I'd like to add this dimension of why, you know, what is going on in your brain when we choose some of these tools. Okay, so if you have any questions, go ahead and write me an email beforehand. Otherwise, look forward to seeing you. Thanks.